Welcome to another week of Caps Chat. I'm Cody Lefkowitz of Voice Three Capitals, and we're here with Stepan Picorni and Hunter Carrick. Uh, guys, how's it going? It's going good. How are you doing? Good. Pokey, how's it over in uh, in Europe? It's good. We got a we got a nice day today. It's beautiful here. We got a it's it's going good. How are you? It's good. Everything's good in Wisconsin. Obviously, opened up again. Uh, caps are back in action. Couple guys getting ready to skate once they're allowed to. Um, have you guys? I know we've been trying to figure out schedules this whole week. It's been tough. You guys, it seems, have practice all the time. Plus, uh, step on your seven hours ahead of us. But uh, what's your summer summer uh, regiment been? I've been doing a lot of off ice practice. I've been practicing with the with the pro team in my town. Plus, first state sent me uh, workouts and stuff, and I've been skating actually a lot too because I know I know a guy that has a ring, and we have been kind of I know him very well, so he's been letting me skate during this tough Corona time, and it's been good. Nice. Right, um, what about you? Yeah. So I mean, I've been I've been working a good amount. Um, and then I've been skating with a uh, with a figure skating coach just to work on my skating. And then um, and then I just there's there's not too many skates in Chicago just because the ranks were still they're they're just starting to open up kind of like now, uh, but they were they've been open for a little bit. So I mean, as for skating, I've been getting on the ice pretty much at least two to three times a week, maybe more depending on how much ice I have. Uh, I've been working out every day been been kind of doing my own program and then taking notes from uh johnson's uh like because johnson gave us jason johnson he gave us a uh workout program i'll take some notes from there and incorporate that into kind of what i'm doing and then uh yeah so i mean the schedule's just been a lot of working golfing skating and then um working out so i mean i keep myself busy a pretty good amount so it's been fun Pokey, what about you when you're not doing hockey stuff? Hunter said he golfs, he works, he does these things. What are you up to outside of that? Yeah, I've been hanging out with some some of my buddies. I play golf sometimes too. A lot of tennis. It's more of a European sport, I guess. <laughs> uh, I've been I've been playing soccer. Pretty much just also enjoying the time at home with my family too, because I don't get to see them as much while well, during the season yeah and luckily it's it's been pretty nice weather at least here in wisconsin um illinois usually mimics around the same check you guys are halfway across the world uh but it's been some nice weather so we've been able to get out we've been able to do stuff even if uh even if we can't go inside some places so it's good uh, have you have you had some time have you guys hung out with anybody from the team this past year at all I know Pokey for you. There's really only only one guy that you possibly could. <laughs> yeah, I actually have been hanging out with. I've been hanging out with Stips. We had a little, last weekend. I had a little birthday celebration at my cottage house, so we enjoyed that. And I've been skating with him actually, with uh, a lot. Cool. Yeah, no, I haven't been. I haven't been able to really uh, hang out with anybody just because. Um, any of the any of the Illinois players from Illinois, they're kind of either up north from me, or um, but sometimes usually if it was a normal summer, I would have been skating with Jack Horbach a little bit because we'll we'll get on the ice together. Um, but otherwise, that's really it. And then we actually drafted a kid, Ian Spencer, who I'm really good friends with. He's from the same town as me. Um, in the in our futures draft, I think we took him. So he texted me. It was kind of cool the other day. He texted me. He was like, he was like, uh, he was like. It was just like, you know, what, like, you know, we're going to be teammates or something like that. And I was just like, cool, congratulations. And now he's just going <laughs> to hopefully be there for camp, you know. So it was funny. Yeah. How much are, are you looking forward to camp? Obviously, Pokey, you're going into Ferris State next year, so it's a little different. But, Hunter, for you, it's – I think we're a month away at this point, just over a month away, and, yeah. and camp's right around the corner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really excited because right now – I'm doing the most I can and trying to do the most I can to prepare for that. So then when I show up, you know, I get to impress coach Upton and, um, and you know, that's the, that's the goal is to, you know, start off on a good foot with coach Tom and, um, 
So, I mean, I'm looking forward to that. Definitely looking forward to getting things started, especially with how last year kind of ended. Um, my season kind of would have been done anyways because of because I had a broken finger. Um, so what's going to be good is it's going to be good to, you know, have this month of getting ready for camp, start camp, and then, um, you know, start and finally meet everybody and begin things for the next season. Really excited. Pokey, for you, have you gotten any uh, orders from Ferris State yet on when you have to come back to town and what camp's going to look like and, and how you proceed into school? Yeah, we have been um, we have been having actually every week like a little FaceTime Zoom call, like some, something like this with the whole team. And they want me to be there August 10th. That's when the – that's when like the hockey team starts training and everything and school starts at the end of the month. But uh, I'm really looking forward to, you know, get to college and start things the right way. I've been doing a little bit of schoolwork too, just because I haven't been, I've been out of school for two years. So <laughs> just so I can get in right away. But yeah. other than that, um, I mean, I'm excited for first state just to, you know, get to college and play play in CAA. And the only thing that's kind of worrying me right now is that the U.S. Embassy in Prague hasn't still hasn't opened. So I, I haven't been able to get my visa done. So I'm looking forward that they hopefully, hopefully they open it soon. Let's go back now. Let's. Uh, I want each of you to take us through sort of how you how you got to Madison, how you got to where you're going this year. Um, obviously, very different, Hunter. You're you're from the states. You're from Chicago. I mean, you're a couple hours down the road, Pokey. You're overseas where you don't get probably as much exposure as what you might get here. So uh, let's start, Hunter. Let's you know take us through sort of how you got to this point. Yeah. So cool. my it's a long story. Yeah, it is, but I'll make it quick. Um, so when I was 16, that was like the beginning of my junior career, you know. Um, I started out in the Null with the Johnstown Tomahawks and then got traded to Omaha Lancers. And I played 35 games for Omaha. And then at the trade deadline of that year, I actually in one season I played on three different teams. I got traded to Muskegon. And then we went through playoffs with Muskegon. We got knocked out in the first round, which was pretty sad. And then I went home for the summer. During the summer, I got a call. I got a call um, Let me know I got traded to Lincoln Stars. I played for Lincoln Stars for 20-something games. And then I decided to leave Lincoln just because things weren't working out. I went and actually, due to rules and the stuff, I had to go play in the NCDC, which is out east. And then I came after our season there. We lost in the semis there. We had a pretty good team. Could have maybe won it, whatever. Um, that would have been awesome. But then we lost in the semis. And I rejoined the Chicago Steel and played at the Chicago Steel, played playoffs with them, went through Eastern Conference Championship with them. And then um, we lost in the Clark Cup Finals. That would have been cool to get a ring. But, I mean, the thing is, is, is I wasn't there all year. So it would have been, you know, it would have been a given ring to me. So I'm kind of glad, you know, you got to earn those, whatever. And then after that year, got traded, back, like, I think Omaha retraded for me. Went and played in like 10 games. This is the start of when I kind of finally came back to Madison. Um, because when I was 16, I was drafted to Madison. I don't know if you know this. I was drafted to Madison in your guys' futures draft. I was taken by Coach Suter, and I talked to him in the first place. And I didn't make the team as a 16-year-old, so I played the null. And then going to – going and starting the last season in Omaha, I played 10 games with them. And things just weren't working out there. And our coach, he was like, you know, I'm trading you to Madison. So, and then I showed up in Madison and, you know, things got started there and it was, it was a blast. And that's where I met Poke and we lived together and that was a great time. So Pokey's story is pretty unique too. We both have told each other our stories. We both know each other pretty well. So that's pretty much it on my end, you know, pretty quick snippet. I don't know, I think six or seven junior teams in a matter of three to four years, which is pretty tough, but I mean, it's all been worth it. It's still fun. So. Well, my story starts um, when I was 16. I just turned 16. Um, uh, a coach from – actually, a Czech coach wanted me to play in Florida for the Tampa Scorpions. Uh, I played two years there in the NAPHL. It was a great two years. I love Florida. It's beautiful weather. would love to live there one day. 
Um, after two years, I was uh, I was tendered to um, Aberdeen Lynx in the Nall. We had a great season. We ended up winning the whole thing. It was it was just a dream season. Uh, it was amazing. Then uh, uh, after that year, I get drafted to Madison, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I played a year in Madison, and I earned my commitment in uh, in the Nall with Aberdeen Wings. And last year, I played in Madison. That's that's pretty much it. I feel I I took my couple of years in the Nall, not on the playing side, on the business side, but I feel like it's a grind. No matter where you are, the USHL is a grind, the Nall is a grind, but they're different it's very different I feel the Nall is a much more physical league you you know you get rocked pretty much every time you're out there on the ice this is a little more skill you have those guys but they also protect you a little more Um, so Mm -hmm. two guys coming coming from the NA I think I think that you're able to transition a little into this league and and bring some of that grit with you so it's cool to see (laughs) for sure yeah for sure the Nall the Nall is um, there's a lot of older guys actually um I would say some divisions, uh, especially the South, is very grindy, very a lot of fights. It's just a battle out there. But the other divisions, I mean, they're pretty skilled too, but the USHL is just um, it's a lot more skill, and I would say it's a little bit faster too. Like you said, it's the Nulls older guys. It's a lot younger guys here, so I'm sure is, you know, two guys that are sort of – in the later parts of junior hockey, not the 16 year olds who once were, it's, it's a little weird to see guys a, a hair younger than you coming out and, and showing the skill that they have. Yeah. What was the futures draft? Like Oh fours this year. Do you know? I think it was, yeah, I think it was Oh fours this year. I think Quinn Finley we picked oh. is, is an Oh four. So yeah. Oh four, Oh three, at least like, yeah. I mean, Oh three is not that bad. It's only three, but Oh four, like a 2004 birth year is just funny. I mean, let alone being a 2000, but I mean, yeah, you're you're a little bit on the older side, especially because I'm gonna be an OA and overager, and I mean I'm excited for it because it's another year of of just playing hockey and not really worrying about having to do schoolwork. Like right now, I'm just taking, I'm doing ACT like Pokemon. He's doing some schoolwork for for Ferris. I'm just doing a little ACT work to uh, kind of sharpen up my brain a little bit. But then I'm also gonna take the ACT. Uh, I think on, I think in like seven or eight days on June 13th or 12 or whatever, and and um, I'm excited for that, but it's kind of hard hitting the books again after taking three to four years off. So it's going to be fun to see what happens here. (laughs) It's going to be fun to see what happens. (laughs) Uh, Hunter, for you, though, you've had sort of a guy that's right there for you that can help to lead you in these things. Obviously, your older brother, and I'm sure, you know, he gets talked about in a lot of interviews that you do. Um, Mm -hmm. A little bit older, he's a 94, but he is a defenseman who plays in the NHL. He's been through the ranks. He he knows what it's like to go through the school programming. He knows what it's like to go through the hockey programming. Uh, how much of a of a help has he been to you in in your development, both on and off the ice? He's a he's a huge help because, um, like right now, I've kind of matured and I figured out what I need to be able to do and. And what do you need to bring to the rink on a day-to-day basis? And he really helped me learn that. Um, as a 16, 17-year-old starting off in the league, bouncing around a little bit, um, kind of talking to him on a day-to-day basis, going through that, especially my time in Lincoln when, it, you know, you're talking trade talks, you know, you're unhappy, you've got to go into the coach's office and, and deal with the ugly side of being unhappy and going and talking to coach and asking for a move or whatever. Um, he really helped me do that so at a younger age I felt like I was a little bit more knowledgeable than than you know a younger guy who doesn't have that guy to look up to like Connor's been through it um he played at the NTDP program he was committed to Michigan then decommitted went and played in the OHL and um even while he played in the OHL he still attended the University of Michigan he's a very smart he's a very smart older brother um he's very reliable he's a great role model so having him around to help me and and push me in the right direction has been, has been great because um, without him, you know, sometimes you might find yourself lost. Like Pokey doesn't really have an, have an old brother who's in the hockey world. He has an older brother, but you know, he's got to do everything by himself. He's got to figure it out by himself, whether he has an advisor or not, but you know, just, just two different, two different um, paths definitely to get to the same spot, you know? So 
having Connor there to help me and having him there to definitely talk to when you're kind of down about things, you're, you know, you're in a little bit of a rut. He helps you pull yourself out of it. And that's a big part of hockey. You know, you can get into those little lulls and get down, but if you, if you got someone there to help you pull yourself up, whether that's an older brother or a coach, it's, that's really, really, um, uh, looking for a word, you know, that's really awesome and, and, uh, helpful, you know, so. I guess moving over to pokey then, uh, you know, you, like, uh, Hunter said, you don't have that older brother that can help you to do that, but have you had sort of that mentor that's been there for you when, when you get into the slumps or even to help just guide you? I mean, you said that there was a coach that you had that told you, Hey, go play in, in the States, go play in Tampa. Um, you know, who, who has that been for you that sort of helped you to guide your path and, you know, say Ferris State's the right way to go. And this is how we're going to get to the NHL. Yeah. Well, um, it all started with, um, so the coach I played uh, that brought me to USA, his name is Vinny Prospo. He's an ex uh, NHL player. He's from the Czech Republic too. He played, I think he played 16 season seasons in NHL. And, uh, you know, he, he, he said, you know, come play for my team in Florida. You know, if you do good, you can, there's a, there's a great way to get education and a way to the NHL through the, the colleges in USA. And he believed in me that I can, you know, I can do it. So, I mean, he has been definitely probably the most helpful coach I, I've ever had. He always believed in me. I'm still in touch with him till this day. Um, he coaches in the Czech Republic right now, actually in the top league. Um, my older brother, he played hockey. He didn't, he didn't get to, you know, that really high level, but he still played hockey. Uh, other than that, making the choice of school, um, I don't know. I think I was at the time I was making the choice. Uh, was talking maybe to like six to seven schools, and uh, I visited a couple of them and. Um, I talked with my parents a lot. Uh, I talked with, uh, with Coach Prospo, and um, I made up my decision, and I'm excited for future. All right, let's go on then. I know I had you guys fill out those questionnaires and sent them over to you, so you have each other's. Uh, let's go through that. We'll start with the movie side of things. Um, I Obviously, you guys live together, and so I sort of wanted to know this. You guys both put Harry Potter as your second one. Uh, yeah. First off, is there a specific movie, not just the series, but a specific movie? And how many, did you guys just go through it consistently as roommates? So we did we try to watch these Pope, but we were on. We were, I think I think we, we were did. unsuccessful. Like we tried, <laughs> but but we couldn't get them because I ended yeah. up watching them like through X. I watched them as a kid, you know, and I loved them. And I never really read the books just because they were so long. I, I, I wish I could read the books, but they're just too big and thick. So I really <laughs> watched the movie. And um, and you got to, like, rent them on Xfinity. And we didn't – we didn't we just had, like, my little Xbox down there with Netflix, Hulu, whatever. And so we didn't get to watch it together. But for for Harry Potter, I watched – I rewatched it again, like, pretty recently. I'd probably say um, – I mean, I like the first one the most, but I probably – think like the coolest one is is the last one when he finally beats uh like defeats Voldemort, Voldemort. I can't come to, yeah you know so it's like I don't know which one's necessarily my favorite I thought they were all good but the last one where he he finally um like takes down Voldemort and then finally like the the I, I forget their little world or whatever is like safe you know I like that one just because now the guy's, you know, gone and dead or whatever. You know, I, I don't know what to say, but I'm trying to put in the right words. But do you remember anything of Harry Potter, folk? I just know you thought yeah, it was a good one. Uh, I remember well, we were sketching these down like, what's a good movie? <laughs> Harry Potter. Oh, my God. Oh, there you go. I mean, Harry Potter, it's been, uh, I, I mean, I love all the movies. I, I think in my lifetime, I watched all of them probably like at least five times recently was added on netflix i don't know if in, in usa or just in czech republic but uh in czech republic they the czech netflix has all the harry potters right now on it so i'm on the i'm on the fourth one right now i'm watching them all again so i love harry potter great movies 
It's funny though, because uh, a couple weeks ago I talked with Brock and Frank, and they had a ser- I think Frank had a series on his, and Brock was just talking the whole time about how you can't have. And Davis had the same thing: you can't have a series; you have to have a specific movie. And Brock's whole thing was, yeah, but you could have a movie, but this, I don't know. It was just the yeah. series could be ruined. And so you guys at Harry Potter on there, obviously as a series, just good overall. And then Pokey for you, you put the hangover. And that was one of his big explanations was the hangover is a great movie, but the series is not fantastic because of the second and the third. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, good point. So the rest of your list though, I mean, hangover, you put – miracle on there a lot a couple people have put that as a hockey player i think it's the yeah one. as a hockey player you, you gotta put it i mean <laughs> yeah everybody watches it oh yeah no Num- that's number one if you haven't watched miracle and you play hockey then i don't realistically think you play hockey you know what i mean you're just you're just a fan of hockey then but yeah i mean looking at my other list here my favorite movie yeah. on that list honestly is it's a wonderful life because um every Chris, so it's a christmas movie kind of and it's and it's a it's a movie about this banker who ends up like his father's business ends up going out of bit like his father's bank ends up going out of out of business because of um I don't know the year but kind of when that whole like it's kind of based off that whole like great depression time when bank runs were going on and everybody was running to the bank to get their money out of it and then the economy kind of went into a big lull um like I just love watching that movie with my dad cuz it's honestly my dad's favorite movie and um and then it's it's just a good it's just a great movie because it's about a guy who's super super like distraught and unhappy with his life he's about to commit suicide and then it like cuts to like these two stars talking and an angel comes down and the angel ends up saving the guy's life and i'm forgetting the main character's name which i usually remember it uh, but it's a great movie and then wolf of wall street that's an all-time classic i'm surprised that's not on your movie list poke I'm I'm actually I might have forgotten about it. That's a great movie too. <laughs> yeah, you put Hunger Games on over Wolf of Wall Street. That's sure. Oh, Hunger Games. Come on. Yeah, Hunger I know. Games is I know. Great too. Games is good. Which Hunger Games though? All of them. No, I, haven't seen the, I haven't seen the last one, Catching Fire, and I have the book, but I've got like I've got I've like tried to read it. I've only gotten like yeah, half no way you're ready. It. It's like this thick. <laughs> it's thicker than Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, it's so big. I haven't seen the last one either. First two are great, but again, this goes back. I think uh, Davis would have a fight to pick with you if you say the whole series. Davis Too would bad, love Davis. to chew you up. <laughs> yeah. Davis would love it. Uh, and then I like, yeah, for Hunter on your list, you put Forrest Gump, another one of those. Tom, I mean, Tom Hanks is one of the best all-time actors and, and just okay. showing what he can do in that movie early on in his career. Amazing. Yeah, he's good. And then Step Brothers, uh, comedic classic, you know. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Ted, first time I think that we've seen Ted on the list here, Pokey. Good movie. Oh, Seth MacFarlane, Ted. he's a genius. And so it's amazing. It's very good movie. <laughs> Ted, I might have to go with the first one. I, I'm not I'm not as much of a fan of the second one. Yeah, I'd agree with that. First one, it made it. It, it became yeah. an icon because of that. Mm-hmm. Totally. Uh, let's go on to TV shows and – there's one that sort of stands out on each of your list, and we'll start with with Hunter for you. The Office. Every everybody I think has had it on there, and so I always yeah. want to know how many times through do you think you've seen The Office? Not me. <laughs> oh, I've seen The Office because what I'll do is I'll just throw it on when I'm like going to bed, going to bed late or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, they've they've since taken it off Netflix, which is crazy to me, but makes sense. Whatever. Um, but. The actor, the main actor is Steve, Steve Carell, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's, his, he's so freaking funny <laughs> in that. I've, um, and then you got Dwight, I, I think it's Wilson Rain or whatever. Mm-hmm. Dwight's just like that strange, like hilarious character that I always think's funny. Um, I mean. It's, they like just, put an all-star cast together of really people who weren't all-stars at the time. Since then, yeah, I mean, John Krasinski, who plays Jim, has come out. Uh, Steve Carroll has broken out of his shell. Even yeah, Rain Wilson has done a little, a bit more. Um, all of them, but yeah, it was it's amazing because it was an all star cast of people who were are not all stars at the time. Yeah, totally. So, <laughs> so some of the other movies, uh, Stranger Things, All American, All American's good. It's just I was watching it at the time of that and I was hyping it up a little bit. Ever since I I haven't finished it, I've only seen the first season. That's what I was like. That's why I liked it. The Twilight Zone's a classic. That's like. 
old time. It's only in like black and white, but I'll watch. So this that is one. old Twilight Zone because I think they came out with a new Twilight Zone. So is this yeah, old no, Twilight this Zone? Is, then? This is old original like okay. Twilight Zone where they have it on Netflix. It's still black and white. I was watching it at the time we were filling these out. I really enjoy it. I've, I've since like stopped watching it because now there's other shows that are going on. Shameless, I've finished. Stranger Things, I've finished. So, I mean, the list changed now, but it's it's a good list. I agree with it still, you know? So. I feel like Shameless, though, yes, it's phenomenal, but also just for for you being from Chicago, for me being from Chicago, you see it yeah. and you're like, oh, they filmed this down here and they did it here yeah. and this is what it's – so it's – it's a little close you'll to home the, for us. <laughs> you'll see the CTA trains and trucks or whatever. And then they'll, yep. you know, you'll see like the underpass that Frank, you know, woke up from, you know, from being blackout, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like funny. You could, you could probably, you could possibly, I've never been, I've had friends that have like been to the house, like have gone to the house, <laughs> posts on their Snapchat, like this is Shameless's house, you know, but I haven't, I've never done that just because I don't know where it's at, but Mm -hmm. that's pretty cool you know it's it's filmed in chicago you know so you can yeah it's my hometown <laughs> baby uh poke for you i was so excited when i saw this on your list because it's one of my favorite tv shows and that's suits and it's suits i, I don't know if a lot I've, of people have yeah. seen it i went through this summer during quarantine and watched it with with my wife becca and we binged it and she on the edge of her seat every single moment and going through it again, there are things where I'm like, I forgot about that. Or that was the coolest scene I've ever seen. Amazing, amazing show. Yeah. Suits. Uh, I've never heard of that show till this, this, since I got back, I just popped it on on Netflix. And I mean, I, I fell in love with it because I mean, I don't know. It's just so entertaining. It is always, it's always intense. It's always something happening. And recently I've been watching in the past, you know, the past three nights before I go to bed. It's always like, I'm going to go to bed now. And then something happens at the end of the show. And I want to watch another, I want to watch another episode. It's, it's amazing. It's a really good show about lawyers and stuff, which I've, I've never really, you know, been watching any shows about lawyers, but it's, it's, it's very entertaining. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you like that one and it sort of follows that USA track, uh, white collar, another very good show that mm -hmm. it's not about lawyers. It's, it's, if you guys have seen the movie, catch me if you can, which was actually on TV yeah. the other day, it's essentially the same plot line as the end of it, where he's a, a white collar criminal who gets broken out of jail and becomes an FBI expert essentially on like forgery and stuff like that. Another, it's a USA show. It's just another phenomenal one. Sounds good. So yeah. So very very surprised I didn't put on um the the office. A little bit. Again, it's every week at least one person has it. Most of the time it's two. So a little bit. I've seen either the office or Parks and Rec. Those have been on most yeah. lists. Yeah, so, I'm a, office is better than Parks and Rec any day of the week in my eyes. But <laughs> oh, tell them about Friends. We would watch Friends because yes. that was we would bust Friends. out Friends together like. Like we would just get home from the rink and we'd just be like, look at each other, just be like, <laughs> friends, click it on. You know what I mean? It was sick. Yeah, I I love Friends. That's my that's my top show. Uh, The Office. I would put Friends over the over The Office any day. I don't. It, that might be just me. I mean, The Office is more. I guess I don't know. Just an American thing, because I know in USA, everyone loves The Office. I was never able to really get into it. Yep. Uh, Friends has been the show. It has so many seasons and so many episodes that, like, I can literally just click on any episode of the seasons, and I always have fun with it. It's just a great show to pop it on whenever you're bored <laughs> or don't know what to pick. Yeah. And then you have you have some newer ones on there as well. Money Heist, obviously, one of the newer ones. I think it's a Netflix original. Uh, the Last Dance. I mean, it. it 10 episodes, that's all it was, but it was 10 of the most exciting episodes I think ever put on TV, and then Tiger King came out this summer, and another one. I haven't seen it yet, but I think, I don't know anybody else that hasn't talked about it. Yeah, Tiger yeah. King's good. It's a little crazy in my book, just because it goes back and forth between all these, like, these people are crazy characters. Like, you got Joe Exotic, who is, he's, he's you know, he is who he is, and you got Carol Baskins, who's this nice you know, lady and whatever. 
but she, I don't know. It just goes back and forth. But <laughs> the, the thing that you, the reason, so I wish I put the last dance on there just because, so the being from Chicago, I have two parents that work and vend at every Chicago event. So whether it's the Bears, Bulls, uh, Hawks, White Sox, Cubs, whatever it is, my parents are usually there selling whatever they sell for the day, whether it's beer, T-shirt, depending on the event. And um, I help, but I'm not old enough to sell alcohol yet, so I just really only do T-shirts. But it's really cool watching it with them because we'll be watching it, and my dad will be like, I remember that, like, clear as day, and yada, 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 you know what I mean? And then you hear him talking about literally being in the arena when MJ, you know, hit that game-winning shot. My mom and dad are like, we were parading out, you know, downtown waving. And that's the night we were waving flags outside the windows, right? Right, Jory? My dad's name's Jory. So, I mean, I just think it's cool listening to them talk about that. And it's uh, it's fun, like, kind of – that they're part of that history, you know what I mean? They're, and then watching some of the clips where it'll show, like, the vendors going up and down the, ro- up and down the aisles, they'll be like, that's Jim. That's Steve, you know what I mean? Like, they see him, and they know them, and it's cool, you know? So Pokey, for you, uh, obviously basketball is not as big international. It's growing, but that that movie, do you see some things in it that you're like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense for where basketball is in Czech right now? Yeah, so pretty much The Last Dance, I, I mean, it, it just recently kind of came out. So mm-hmm. um, I've never really knew – I mean, I knew basketball, but I was never really interested in it. But, like, watching that movie, it's, it's – it's, I mean, it's it's amazing what that guy did. And, you know, so, I mean, he's he's the GOAT. Um, I think Wayne Gretzky over Mike Jordan any day, but he's <laughs> he's the he's the GOAT in basketball, that's for sure. I think uh, Pokey put it out there, but that is the ultimate thing. People talk about LeBron – Maybe it's just because I'm from Chicago. Nobody beats Jordan, hands down. No, no, hands down, <laughs> hands down. LeBron, he's a little quick LeBron Jordan talk here. I'll give you my hot take. <laughs> I think LeBron is a phenomenal athlete. I think he's a generational talent. Like, there's no doubt about it. I just think that Jordan's competitiveness, like, I don't think LeBron has that. Like, LeBron will sit a game – when playoffs are coming up and Jordan didn't take a day off, didn't take a set, didn't take a practice off, didn't take a set of benching off, didn't take anything off. Everything was full metal. Like he's going hard. And if you, and if he, and, and also this part of it, I loved is that he would challenge his teammates like through the roof, you know, he'd get into their ear and stuff. Whereas LeBron, you know, it might, it might just be a, for fun, you know, Oh, you know, put it up, dunk it, come, you know, whatever. I can't dunk, so I can't really speak on that. But I just think Le- LeBron is not. He, he might he like if they did if they played one on one, LeBron might beat Jordan just because of LeBron's size and strength. But he's not going to outscore. Um, he's not. He's. He, I think Jordan's just like finesse and competitiveness is gonna is gonna overtake and win the game for him because Jordan doesn't lose baby Jordan doesn't lose period agreed (laughs) let's move on we'll go to the video games that's what we have up next um pokey for you I mean a little bit run of the mill you didn't have though and and Hunter did uh Call of Duty obviously they came out with Modern Warfare 2 again uh the remastered ones but you didn't have any of those on there you just not a big video game guy or the shooting games are not for me. Uh, no. You can, you know, you can ask Hunter, Fortnite and Call of Duty. I, I can't aim. I, I yeah. suck at those. I'm not brutal good. at it. I'm, I'm brutal at the shooting games. I can play. I can play the sports games. You know, NHL, FIFA, and I like the, I like the, um, GTA. Right? I put. Yeah, you put yeah, GTA yeah, in there. And yeah. Rocket League. Yeah. Yeah, Rocket oh. League. I just Rocket League is just because. That's what Brock Baker played a lot, and we kind of got into it in the in the in the locker room with the Xbox <laughs> when we had it. He he is he actually played it all the time, so he's ridiculously good at it. Yeah, I had, for you, yeah. I had COD just because I play. I'll play some of those first-person player games. You know, the GTA, 
GTA five. It's a fun, any GTA is fun. Um, I like how it's kind of like free world, free person. You can go in there, you know, if you want to go run, if you honestly want to go and run somebody over, you can, cause in real life, I'm never <laughs> going to do that, you know, so, um, destiny. That's a little bit of a, I played that probably two years ago. That was just a really fun. It's similar to GTA, how you're kind of running around, but it's more like alieny and stuff like that. It's fun. Uh, Call of Duty World War Two. I'd honestly would scratch that off and put like Fortnite instead there or something. But I was playing at that at the time because that was one of the newer Call of Duties. But Super Mario Bros. I used to have one of those little Nintendos and I would play with those. I don't have it anymore. Um, but that was always a good game. And then I used to have a play. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it was called a PSP. It was a little handheld thing. Yeah. Have Mario Bros. I'd have, I'd have football, whatever the heck, and NHL and. I'm surprised I didn't put NHL on there, but honestly, it's because I'm not that good at it, so it makes me <laughs> mad because, like... You had well, NHL as, like, sort of a sixth one on there, and... Yeah, I'll play, yeah. I'll play Pokey, he would... and he, he, like, any of the sports games, it's, it's me and him or Switch, so any of the sports game, like FIFA, NHL, Pokey's going to run my show, but then if we get, if we're playing, you know, I'm going to use some Call of Duty, if we're playing, you know, quick scoping in the freaking at Rust and MW2, I'm going to kill him. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to win and beat him, which is how it is. He would, you know? he would, he would never play me in NHL. He would he give would up just... after the first game. I would ask him every day, like, NHL, and he would be like, nah, I'll put it on Netflix or something. <laughs> <laughs> we would, we would I'm like, never, dude, I don't want to get – scared. <laughs> it was usually FIFA. We'd play, like, FIFA 15, and he'd always be the Spurs, and I'd be, like, Barcelona or something, and he would just wax me, like, Four one, and I'm like, this sucks. And then he'd be like, you want to play again? And I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, I never. I tried to get into FIFA a lot. I tried to get into it, but I don't know. I couldn't. Again, you're European. You're over in Czech. It's soccer's a much bigger sport over there than it is here. That may be it for me, but I just I couldn't get into it. And then okay. on to on to songs. Uh, you guys each had a, a little Travis Scott in there. Oh yeah. Uh, and then, to make... Sorry, yeah, yours yours spread out a little more. Uh yeah. Pokey, yours is last couple of years in there. Congratulations. I remember that was I think I was graduating college so four, five, six years ago, whatever that was. And that was coming out because everybody wanted it played for graduation. Um and then Hunter, yeah, on yours, I mean you're like Travis Scott, Rodney Atkins. So I've hit a little a little hip hop, I've hit a little country, yeah. and then you go with C C R. Bob Marley yeah. and Fleetwood Mac, and you're like, oh, yeah. let's toss it back a little bit, about 30, 40, yeah. 50 years. <laughs> so I like – so I just pick – because those are honestly like probably so, probably top five, six, seven of my favorite songs I could think of at the time. I think – because so Travis Scott's like my favorite artist for, for like rap and hip-hop genre. Um, country, I'd say Rodney Atkins or Kenny Chesney. But that Watching You song is just like it's, – it's about your – like a kid watching his dad it's like really like meaningful song you know I'll listen to it sometimes and like get deep in my feels and then be like I love you dad you know what I mean and then have you seen the rain that's just a classic like jam out jamming Bob Marley I like to get a little Bob Marley going every now and then I got a playlist going with like it's called my classics playlist and it's just it's like that's where I kind of got my uh, CCR and Bob Marley and Fleetwood Mac, you know, inspiration there. The Chain by Fleetwood Mac is probably my favorite song just because, you know, they're – it's a great song. You know, I can't really explain it otherwise. But Jammin' Bob Marley is probably one of my favorite Bob Marley songs. And, I mean, I'm not, like, the hugest Bob Marley fan, but I like him for sure. But I, I just was trying to spread and just get a full circle of, like, genres, you know. Whereas I feel like this is one of the hardest questions because – a lot of this is, well, what are you feeling right then and there? And what are you feeling now? And it's like, I feel like for me, at least I'd always go with the same thing. You know, it's always a little country, maybe a little uh, alternative in there, but it, you know, mm -hmm. I have songs I'm listening to now. I could be five songs that, I mean, especially for you, you filled this out like a month ago, you know, a month later, it'd be tough, but Pokey, you went again, pretty much the same genre. That's what we were talking about. You went essentially just, you know, a little rap and hip hop for the first four and then you threw in that little twister there at the end with uh, hometown girl by josh turner <laughs> yeah so i uh, me with music um i'm not a big music guy i mean uh i just have rap songs and uh you know and in spotify and i just kind of just play it 
and just listen to it. I can listen pretty much to anything. Hunter knows he would he would be usually in charge of music, and he would ask me, "Is that good?" And I'll be just like, "Yeah, that, that's fine. That's cool." You know, sometimes I'm feeling a little, you know, rap. Sometimes I'm feeling a little country. Um, sometimes classics, but um, other than that, I can pretty much listen to anything. Um, I just put the four, first four. I just I literally just went on Spotify and looked at my most played songs. And I just put those four, and then I was like, okay, I can put all five rap songs. And so then I, <laughs> then I put a little country, probably Hometown Girl is probably my favorite country song. Uh, yeah, it's, do you just have like pump up songs that just like essentially all that you listen to? Uh, I mean, I have a, pump ups i have a like a little album of pump pump up songs before like games and stuff but um i just have one big album in my spotify and then just play sh- you know just sh- shuffle play and you know just play something i'm fine with it so in in the locker room we've asked the last couple of guys from this year's team do you guys ever ever grab control of the uh i guess it wasn't an ox chord but the ox chord and, and throw on your own music or do you sort of leave that to brandon and whoever else um, uh, so go you ahead. can go ahead. You go. Uh, you go. go. <laughs> okay, okay. You go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> usually it was it was suit usually on the music. Um, I never really played the. I never really was ever charged in charge of the on the of the songs because, like I said, I just had one big album and I just play whatever. So I might get chirped a lot for the songs I have there because yeah. not all of them are the best songs, you know and. Suits was suit was good with the music. I, I just let him play. Yeah, suits suits definitely had his. He had the tunes figured out. You know what I mean. But he would take over. I would hop on every now and then. Um, if there was no one in the locker room and I was kind of doing my own thing on the day, I definitely you know throw on there and, and pop some songs in. But usually I just take over like in the car and and uh, you know if we're at a if we're at like a little you know. If we're on, I don't know, I'll sometimes take it over. But usually I try to pass it off to, like, other people just because I don't really care that much about what we listen to. It's not like, oh, let me get aux. I need to play my music. You know what I mean? It's like, no, I'll play whatever you want to play. I don't really care. Um, like, I can I can really – realistically, I like anything. You know what I mean? And, and that's how pokey is. So, like, just because it was my car and I'd be driving, I'd be the one playing tunes. And so that's, and I have a really long, like, I have a ton of songs. I have a ton of playlists. I'm really into my music just because I can, you know, I use Spotify to sort it well. But yeah, I mean, like for games, I got a playlist that's, you know, called, I don't even know, just like pregame. Mm-hmm. I think I called it like pregame buzzies, you know, I like just get pumped <laughs> up, just start, you know, buzzing, you know, get going, get the legs going, get, get the juice going and start feeling you know, amped up to play, and those songs are really, like, high-tempo rap, maybe some EDM, not really, like, country for my pregame music, but, yeah, definitely, made, like, the chains in there, because, you know, Fleetwood Mac, they got a cool, like, guitar solo I like in there, and all this stuff, and it's a good song, so it pumps me up, you know, so. So we know who has we know who has the good music on the team. Who on the team would you say was the worst and would just get kicked off the ox every time? I'd say I'd honestly say Stibbs just because uh, Jan Stavanger <laughs> just because he hot bot and he would play like this is Chuck Republic like hold it and I don't know what they're saying you know what I mean but, but him and Pope are like hey, hey, hey. they're like amped yeah, up at it and I'm just like I don't know what you guys are saying but I'm just going along with it like. <laughs> up and down, you know, but then everyone is else like, turn this off. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Yeah, me and me and Stips love. I mean, I, I obviously listen to some Czech songs too, so we would we would just play some Czech music just to you know, just to Change make the up. other guys. <laughs> yeah, just to just to make the other guys a little mad. They they hated when we spoke Czech around them because they always <laughs> thought we were you know, saying something bad about them and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, would, we would have fun with that too, you know, just start looking at people and speaking Czech and, you know, they would be like, well, what are you saying? <laughs> you know? So that was yeah. fun. All right. So just between you two, 
if you guys are going out, if you're coming, let's do two different ones. If you're coming to the rink and if you're coming, to, if you're going to see the boys somewhere, who takes longer to get ready? Uh, I'm going to say living with Pokey. He's the answer for both because, <laughs> because no, no offense, Poke, no offense, but I would take yeah. long every now and like, there'd be a blue moon where, you know, I had to take long, but I'd be like, Hey, Poke, we're leaving. We're leaving for practice at 11. And this kid would be. I take my time sometimes. <laughs> take time. I'm like, it's like 11, and I'm, I'm like heading out to the car waiting for Pogue. And he comes upstairs, grabs a yogurt, hops in the car, and we leave. And I like, I like made breakfast, did this, you know, got ready. And then Pogue, he was chilling. He was just enjoying his morning, you know, hanging out on his phone, having a good time. And then he comes up, grabs his yogurt. He's like, I'm good to go, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> all right, all right, let's go. I'm more like Pokey, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get it. I was, it was, it was so, I, just because I was like the driver, I just, oh, and, and we lived, we lived 40 minutes away from the rink. Um, we lived in, we lived originally up in uh, Wanakee, and then that billet family decided to move or do whatever, um, so we ended up having to switch houses and we had to move to Cottage Grove. And so now the drive's a 40 minute drive where we can maybe hit traffic. You know, I can't, and, and you gotta be at the rink on time. You know what I mean? And I'd like to honestly be there early. So I'd have to leave. We gotta be at the rink at 1215. I'd like to be there at 1140, the latest to, you know, to hop on the ice. Cause we'd get those morning sessions and screw around a little bit. I'm like, we're leaving at 11, you know what I mean? And then every now and then I'd leave a little bit of room for, for Poke, you know, to take his time or traffic to happen. And we'd still always usually get on, get to the rink on time. And, and if we didn't, I'd let coach know and he'd be understanding of that. But um, yeah, so I mean, having that long of a drive, you know, you, you got to be prepared. You got to be responsible about your morning, like get up at, don't get up at, 10:50 when you got to leave at 11, you know what I mean, or or 11:15, you know, a little bit more time. But get up at I I usually just get up. I mean, because we can sleep in, I'd get up at 9:30, 10, just without an alarm, you know, and and then yeah. I get up and start my morning. And Pokey would probably be up half the time before me watching Netflix or something. Friends. And we shared a room, which was fun, you know. We shared a room, and. uh so, like, if my alarm went off, then we're both waking up at the same time, you know, so it was, it was fine. But So, in, in that room, then, who had the messier portion of the room? Oh, that would be me. I'm glad you sure. said that. <laughs> you didn't want to throw you under the bus twice in a row. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to be, like, just blaming Pokey. It was all you, man. No. Uh, it was just, it was, it was we, we just, we had a little bit of a messy room. Um, for, we, would, um, we would we would we would always clean it up though. Once and, yeah. I mean, we would have a messy room for a little bit, and then you know we would decide, okay, right, let's go clean it up, and then we would have it all nice. We had this we had this huge garbage can because we would get tired of taking out trash all the time. So we had this huge box in the corner, and we would just throw the water bottles in there every time we drank it, just, just to you know make it easier a little bit, so we don't have to throw it out every. Yeah. Every week. Uh, yeah. Who would who would be more likely to take something of the other guys without asking? Take something from the other guys without asking? Yeah. That, like, would he take stuff from you, or would you, you take stuff from him? Like, whether um, you know, clothes or food or whatever that's a hard it is. Question. We would pretty much like if I needed some of his, I'd let him know. Like, we weren't. It wasn't like we would just take. You know, like, oh, I'm wearing this hat for today. You know what I mean? It's like, oh. You know, uh, hey, I, I can't find my hat. Do you have an extra one? You know, and I mm -hmm. you know, like we were respectful of that because we didn't want to be I wasn't just gonna go into Pokey's, you know, underwear and sock drawer and start wearing his socks and underwear. And he was definitely not gonna do that for me. Um, or same thing with like t shirts even. Like we 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 be, we both had our own stuff and we kept to ourselves, but um what we would share a lot of is like food or Pokey would have this this um this chocolate from Czech and he would be like, oh. he would just look at me and be like, you want some chocolate? And I'd be like, I'd be like, glad you asked, you know, and he'd just take a, very good, you know, give me a little bit. Well, I knew he would love the chocolate because I mean, 
no offense to American chocolate, but the European chocolate is way better. Hunter knows. <laughs> Very good. No one, no one can tell me that the American chocolate is better than in the Europe. It's, the chocolate here and the sweets are off the chain here. Uh, who would you guys say is the better dancer? Oh, it's going to be Hunter. Uh, I'd say I got him beat there, but I, but Pokey still holds his own. You know what I mean? Like, the thing is, is that it's, like, more right off the bat. Like, I'm a little more comfortable with it just because, you know, I, I, I like to listen to music and I'll get a little groovy, whatever. Where Pokey, he, like, gets into it, but then he's kind of got to work his way into it. And the next thing you know, I look over at him and he's, you know, he's full on – dancing and it's, everyone's having a great time you know so it's 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 uh it's pretty much i'd, I'd say i'd maybe beat him but still a good dancer but i don't know all right couple more questions here we'll try and go th- quickly through them uh so for for the team as a whole who would you guys say if you were in a tag team wrestling match who would be your partner team as a whole yeah if you had to pick one guy on the team to be your tag team partner, I'd just go with Pokey. We got that. We got that team chemistry. Pokey's got those big, strong legs. Like he'll just come in and put the guy in like a leg lock or something, and just squeeze. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I really think we would do pretty good. I mean, we're not really, we're not really small guys. I mean, we're not, we're not six foot five, but we're, we're both about the six foot, and I think we would make a pretty good wrestling team. Someone besides Poke, I'd probably just say Suter. He's just got that maturity to him, and he's just like, I'll beat you up. You know what I mean? Like, he's <laughs> talking about guys, how he's going to fight them and stuff. And I'm like, go get him, baby. Go fight him. And so I'd probably pick him just because he's got, he's got that confidence factor. He's going to come in and be confident himself to beat you. So I'd, I'd pick him, or I'd go with a slippery guy like Brock. You know, he's, he's a little – elusive he'll slip in and out of those little creases whatever you got him in if we're doing full-on wrestling you know but that's what i'd say i would uh besides hunter i might i might have to pick davis he's just uh he's just a meat guy he's got, a, he's got meat on him you know and we have see, i mean we have big body we have seen it during the season he just throws off guys but uh or suits but honestly on suits i've only played it one year with him He's all, you know, he's he's got a lot of talk that he's gonna fight this guy, that guy. But one thing True. I gotta say, I've I've never seen him fight last year. And, never saw it. You know, never I, saw it. I, I I gotta call him out on it. I've never seen him fight, so <laughs> I would go with Davis. Davis is top top three picks for me too. He's just uh, points. <laughs> he's got the meat. He's got the meat behind it. You know, he's not. It's not that he's like, you know, like fat. He's just a thick strong kid so i mean and, and the thing he's an o2 too so he's two years younger than me and he's like we actually got Monster. like a little fight and, remember our little fight in practice poke and he sucked yeah. me in the face <laughs> <laughs> he punched me and he like i don't know what happened but i think i was i think i was bleeding i forget where i was bleeding i had to get stitches in my lip or something but yeah it was a great <laughs> he's a, a solid punch. guy he's i'll tell you that it was a good solid. punch <laughs> i had to eat it but i ate it and it was a good punch you know so it was, it's all good now, but uh, if you guys if you guys are leaving a road trip, who's most likely to leave some stuff behind? Um, I'd say Poke. He he left something on a on a on a trip one time. I don't know if he remembers it, but I remember everybody I, being like. I feel like Pokey's did, been the most used answer for this one. So. <laughs> I did I did leave something, but I can't remember what it was. It was a charger. Uh, yeah, it was a charger. Yeah, not that big of a deal. I mean, I would say uh, probably, yeah. I mean, probably me just because I left. Uh, I don't think there was anything else but the charger, but I would say that we pretty much, we got, we would get ready pretty, pretty good. I mean, we would, we would take time to get ready and make sure not, we don't forget anything. Here and there, I might, I might have forgotten a charger or something, but I think we did pretty well. Pokey's way of not forgetting anything is just to pack light, you know? (laughs) Only the essentials. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, who on the team would be most likely to go in for a big hit and just whiff and, and knock the boards? Um, Robert Davis. 
I think I saw Jack Horbach do this a few times just because he's so – Jack is so fast that and he'll come in to go hit somebody. He's also very good at hitting guys too. He's also a great penalty killer, whatever. But he'll fly in, come flying in, and let's say the guy dodges it. Like I've seen him in practice or I've seen him in a game like actually hit the boards pretty hard. And I'm like, you all right, Jack? You know what I mean? So just I've just seen him. So I'd pick Jack Horbach, but nothing against Jack. You know, he's great. Jack's one of those kids that he would have that happen. You'd ask if he's okay, and he'd hop up and go, "Yeah, why? What happened? I'm perfectly yeah, fine." He doesn't even realize <laughs> what, you mean? what he just did. You know? Yeah, he's hilarious. Yeah, he's a funny kid. <laughs> or I'd say myself, because like I'm not even that. I'm not a good hitter. Like I can't come into a corner. I can hit you, but like I don't know. I'm not that good at teeing up open ice hits like Davis is. Or Pokey had a few good hits last year that I remember. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't really have any like big hits. You know, I'm. Just, not my game i'd rather try and take the puck from you than throw my body at you you know big so, body yeah. big body long stick yeah baby <laughs> just use that just use yeah um and then last one here who would you guys say is your nhl comparisons oh that's a tough one you go first per poke i think you know who who are you gonna pick i would i would say brad marchand just yeah. because I mean, uh, that's probably my favorite NHL player, too. I don't try to play like him, but I feel like um, he is, I mean, he's a, uh, he's a, he's a lefty. I mean, he's, he's not that tall, and he's, I, I like the way he plays. He's just in everyone's face, and, you yeah. know, he, and he also can back it up because he's a great goal scorer and you know we can pass too he's just a great player and he's in everyone's face very imitating player so probably him yeah a great a guy that I really like to watch he's a he's a uh I think he's still on Carolina right now but I'm strong to suit Jacob Slavin I think yeah I think it's Jacob Slavin is his first name but um, he has a yeah, brother. I think we Josiah. played again. I think we played against Josiah here. So I think yeah, yeah it's Jos- Jacob. There. I I always I'll mess up the two because I know Josiah personally, and then I know his older brother not personally. Like I've only seen him play, but I really like how he plays the game. Um, that's someone I really like to watch and and try to learn from. He played for the Steel at one point. I did too. So like just having that little bit of rootage. But he, I'd say, slaving on Carolina, or I I really like. Uh, um, he was on Colorado. I think he's now on uh, – I think it's, it's either Gerard on Colorado or it's Barry on Toronto. I could be messing up. Too. I haven't watched NHL hockey in so long that I'm <laughs> mixing up names and stuff. But um, it's, it's how, does your brother, how does your brother feel that you uh, may not have picked him? Well, the thing is, he's a <laughs> – the reason why I didn't pick him is because he's a right-handed – He's small. He's he's not as tall as me and as like lengthy as me in my arms. So he plays a different game. He plays more of like a. He's like that strong because he's a tree. He's literally a tree. He's got those tree trunk legs. He'll walk into a locker room in his undergear, and it happened before. Everybody in the locker room stopped, looked at him walking in because he was coming in to ask me for a towel, like if I had a towel to shower, and and he was like, like, hey Hunter, you got a towel? Everyone just stopped, looks at him, is like, this dude's legs are the biggest leg. Like, they're staring at him like he's just a tree, you know? So, and I'm not that strong or, or like, tree like yet. That's the goal to get there. And uh, so, like, he plays, he's a really good defending defenseman. You could kind of call him a skilled stay at home D man. Whereas I like to be a little bit more offensive. Like, my ultimate player that I'd like to be like is Drew Doughty. I think he's a great, great offensive d-man who has who takes care of the defensive game as well you know he's a two-way guy so the reason why i didn't say connor is just because he's different different playing styles he's he's a great connor he's he's a great d-man but he's just he's not he's not um he doesn't it's not similar playing you know i don't know mm-hmm. i don't know how to describe it but i love not watching, the same game. I love watching him play and i love watching everyone else play just, so yeah whatever all right, guys. Well, thanks for coming on, Hunter. I know you got to get back to work. Pokey, it's yeah. nighttime for you, so whatever bedtime routine you have. So, guys, thanks for coming on here, and uh, thank yeah, you, we Cody. look forward to seeing you guys and thank talking you. again. Thank right. you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Yep. Have a good day. You too. See you guys. See you.